Hi, I'm Josh, a ranger at Olympic National Park. Just over there, the Elwha Dam and its hydropower plant used to span the river. Completed in 1913, the dam was considered a major improvement by local communities because hydropower was their only option for creating electricity and electricity made their lives easier. To meet the growing need for more power on the Olympic Peninsula, a second dam, the Glines Canyon Dam, was built about eight miles further up the river in 1927. Back then, people weren't thinking about the possible environmental impacts of building dams. After nearly a century of providing electricity, the dams had serious impacts on the Elwha River ecosystem. Salmon were blocked from getting above the dams and the natural flow of sediment was disrupted. The dams created reservoirs that flooded lower Elwha Klallam tribal lands and also depleted a major food source for local people. But did the benefits of the dams outweigh the negative impacts on the environment and to the local tribes? And where would electricity come from if the dams were taken down? The complex decision to remove the dams took an act of Congress and then two decades of planning before demolition could begin. What would you have done if you had to decide to remove or not to remove the Elwha River and Glines Canyon dams? And why? Let's consider some important issues that go into the decision to remove the dams and explore the different perspectives of people involved with and impacted by the dams. First of all, we'll explore some of the reasons people choose to build dams. To get some ideas, we talked to Kevin Yancey, the foreman at the Elwha Dam. The culture and the society viewed this new technology called electricity as a means to an easier lifestyle. The motive was obviously to produce power, but there was also motive to produce a profit. And that was really the foundation of what built this little empire here. And there was something else compelling about this method of producing power. The rain and snow melt will keep the river flowing for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. People can harness this free energy and convert it to electricity without fear of depleting the source as happens with oil, gas, and coal. And from a recreational standpoint, dams can create beautiful lakes that people use for boating, fishing, and camping. So what do you think? What are the benefits of hydroelectric energy production and the Elwha Dam? Seems like there are positive reasons to build dams, but what about the negative impacts? One serious consequence was that the dams blocked salmon from swimming up the river to their historic spawning grounds and prevented them from reaching 90% of their habitat. To find out more, we talked to several scientists working on the project. There were bears, there were eagles, there were all these critters using this watershed when the salmon went all the way to the headwaters. And you can literally see them try and get past Elwha Dam, trying to get upstream to spawn where they historically used to go. Salmon are a keystone species. There's studies from the Pacific Northwest that show dozens of different animals that use them. They are the fundamental building blocks of the ecosystem. And on Elwha, when that was taken away, that's when the ecosystem started to crash. So what do you think? What are the drawbacks of hydroelectric energy production and the Elwha dams? For thousands of years, the Elwha River ran wild, connecting mountains to sea in a thriving ecosystem. The river was an ideal habitat for anadromous fish, with 11 types of salmon and trout spawning in its waters. For centuries, the fish thrived in the river and provided food for the lower Elwha Klallam tribe who lived along its banks. But when the Elwha and Glines Canyon dams were built, they blocked the migration of salmon upstream and the reservoirs flooded vast areas of tribal homeland. The Klallam people didn't want the dams to be built, nor were they consulted on the decision. 
To get a tribal perspective, we talked to a few representatives from the Lower Elwak Lalam tribe. My elders used to sit by the river and talk about how, how the dams was going to destroy the, the fish. They knew that fish was going to diminish with the dam. And the beaches themselves are almost entirely all cobbles. There's no longer any clams or marine life on the beaches because of the lack of sediment transport. But now, after a century of blocking the river, the dams have been removed. It's been long overdue, uh, something of a hundred years of uh, challenges that our elders and our ancestors have gone through. The dam sure impacted the area around the river. So here's a question for you to consider further. How did the dams impact the Lower Elwha Kalam tribe? In addition to impacting the Lower Elwha Kalam tribe and the natural ecosystem of the area, the dams on the Elwha caused challenges because they were built on federally protected land. In 1938, Olympic National Park was created, and the Glines Canyon Dam was now operating within the new park boundary. By the 1980s, environmental perspectives had changed, and legal challenges and policy questions arose about licensing a dam in a national park. After several years of political process, Congress settled the issue in 1992 by passing the Elwha River Ecosystem and Fisheries Restoration Act, which authorized the removal of the dams and the restoration of the natural ecosystem. Removal of both dams was started in 2011, and completed in 2014 at a cost of nearly $30 million. Today, the Elwha River is the site of one of the largest ecosystem restoration projects in National Park Service history. It's estimated that restoration will cost $325 million. We're doing a lot of things really just to try to get nature kick-started. Over the seven years that we'll be doing this project, we'll be installing more than 400,000 plants. The next time Chinook salmon enter the river, they'll have access to the entire watershed. They'll be able to swim right through glides and recolonize the entire river the way it was historically over 100 years ago. It's something that our children won't ever forget, and our elders are here to witness it. The rangers and scientists of Olympic National Park are playing a significant role in the restoration of the Elwha ecosystem. I want everyone just to take a moment and stop and listen to this amazing sound of this beautiful river flowing, because it is the first time in 100 years that you can hear the Elwha River free flowing. It's pretty intense to be up here working on this project just because this is the river that, um, that, made me want to <laughs> that made me want to be a scientist in the first place. Olympic National Park is a biosphere reserve, rainforest, and wildlife refuge. It's also a place where visitors can learn about science and nature, plus local history and culture. You can also hike, fish, camp, and go boating, and just enjoy being out in nature. So after hearing all these different perspectives, what do you think? What are national parks for? And I'll leave you with an even bigger question. What's a river for?